I'm Paul Cashmere. This is the Noise 11 Interviews from Home series. And today we hear the story of Please Leave Your Light On, the new Paul Kelly and Paul Grabowski album with Paul and Paul with Paul. Uh, Paul Kelly and Paul Grabowski, uh, welcome into Noise 11 by way of, uh, thankfully, technology. Otherwise, we wouldn't be seeing each other for, for, for ages. It's been, uh, been a very productive year for both of you, actually. Yes, it has, strangely. Yeah. I, I guess, you know, with, with lockdowns, uh, we find new challenges of how to be creative. And I'll throw this one first to uh, Paul Kelly, because, Paul, you've, uh, you've spent your time in isolation going in front of the camera and recording uh, some of your own songs, some of other people's songs, and it's formed into an album, uh, which is quite an amazing way to put a record together, isn't it? Yeah, it was, it was accidental. I mean, when we first went into lockdown, I had uh, shows lined up with my band and uh, in some of the um, bushfire affected areas in East Gippsland. And so that that weekend, I just posted, a, you know, film myself on my phone singing a song and sort of saying, sorry, we can't get out there, but here's a song. So that sort of started it off. I know I just got in the habit of posting a poem or a song every few days and main, mainly colours and mainly related to the situation. You know, there's songs about insomnia and cooking and and also uh, songs related to people that that, uh, that left us during that time, like John Prine and Bill Withers. So it was just sort of responding to uh, what was going on, what was going on around me. And then I, I realised I was, you know, after... 40 days, you know, we had a record, there's a, could be a little document called 40 days, which is the origin of our word quarantine, because it can't, quarantine comes from the Italian quaranta giorni, which is when the ships uh, in Italy had to stay off, stay off uh, port, um, not let anybody in for 40 days. So, but um, I just thought that was a good little thing to get um, done and dusted and we just made it available for streaming and um and sort of clear clear the way for uh this record please leave the light on which is uh also a minimal record um about 40 days but in a, in a completely different way because it's obviously it's got this beautiful uh piano and someone who knows how to play it <laughs> uh, and uh, so we've got we've got a minimal record but it's it's um it's sort of the other end of the uh hi-fi spectrum i guess Paul Grabowski, if we go back 12 months, it was around this time last year that Triest with Kate Sobrano was released. And when I listen to this record and when I listen to that record, it's almost like we have some bookends going on here. Yeah, well, Trist is, um, you know, it's, it's obviously more of a, uh, an exploration of a bunch of songs that Kate and I chose um, out of her love of various different types of music. I mean, it, it covers a, a wide variety from show tunes to, you know, covers of um, interesting songs like I Touch Myself, which, you know, in my opinion is probably the, the strongest track on the album in a way. Um, but the huge difference between it and this one, of course, is that these are largely Paul's original songs, as you would expect, being a Paul Kelly album. And um, so, you know, I'm working with the composer and singer of his own material. And that's a very different kind of challenge from just selecting songs that both of you might know um, and, you know, arranging them for, for the situation. Mm. Paul's songs cover a very wide spectrum, um, as you know. Uh, they, there's, you know, I can't think of a songwriter in the Australian canon who's covered so much ground as Paul. Um, and you can see from the number of artists who've covered his material how responsive people have been to it. But, you know, we were able, or he was able, really, to kind of trawl through that uh, wonderful um, oeuvre and choose a number of songs which would suit the intimacy of a piano and voice situation. And I think what we've really gone for here is, is that sense of closeness of two people working very closely together, um, giving the listener a chance to really focus in on, on the lyrics, for, hear them very clearly, and you know, create a kind of a, a mood 
um, and it's create a feeling around each of the songs, which you know we try and sustain from the beginning to the end. So for PK, uh, when you approach these songs in the studio, you're, I guess, in effect, you're covering yourself when you go into the studio to do this. How do you distance yourself from the original song to reimagine what you've come up with uh, with this record? It's pretty simple, really. It's it's like uh, the first uh, advice you would give to actors. Um, I mean, I, I acted once in something long ago. Uh, I was given the best advice: listen to the other actor. Um, so the way the way my way into these songs is to listen to Paul. Um, this this album is sort of is built on trust. We have to trust each other. I mean, I've worked with Paul before, so I know that he's going to. Um, he's going to do two things one he's going to uh he's going to honor the songs in the sense that when he's working at the arrangements he takes certain uh melodies and riffs from the original recordings but he also then takes it to i guess he takes it to um Grabowski land so i i'm i'm for me it's like being invited into Grabowski land and then i wander around in there and uh and um make these all these discoveries the main discovery being new ways to sing the songs which is a gift for any artist to find new things in their own songs that's that's the joy of this project for me paul grabowski i guess you know we go back uh oh decades all well, the two of you uh, paul kelly and paul grabowski together um do you recall the first time you did work together oh yes i do <laughs> <laughs> it's one of our favorite stories <laughs> um it was at the, on the Visard show uh, in, I think it was either 90 or 91. And Paul came on and um, did one of the songs that we've recorded on this album, which is Winter Coat. And um, when I heard it, I thought, oh, that would be a lovely song to include some strings on. So I booked a string quartet and wrote a little arrangement very sweet arrangement um, uh, of, a, of a very beautiful song, of course, you know, which for me had something almost Parisian about it. So something, certainly something European about it. So I did this chart and, and, and Paul came into the studio and we, we, uh, we rehearsed it and it sounded great. Everyone was happy. Um, and then, you know, it's live television, right? So, um, what happened is that the, the cellist actually came in at the wrong place at some point during the song. And that meant that, you know, he was, he, he didn't realise that he had, and he was like a bar out of sync for the rest of the song with the other strings. Now, the only saving thing about it was because of the harmonic structure of that song, because it doesn't have, you know, huge modulations or something in it, it kind of, we, we sort of got away with it. You, you could listen to it and go, wow, that's an unusual arrangement. But it, it didn't sound kind of hideous. It just sounded like odd. And um, <laughs> so, of course I was mortified. And I thought, well, that's the last time I'm ever gonna get to work with <laughs> Kelly. But he was, um, he was very gracious about it. And not another word was said. It, it got away without comment. <laughs> we didn't get abused by viewer faxes or anything else. Uh, nobody sent me a death threat. So it was all good. Um, and then we ran into each other, you know, a few times in subsequent years. So I, we ran into each other in Central Australia. He was um, doing a um, WOMAD gig uh, in Pimba near Woomera and uh, caught up with him there. Um, and then we did this project together called Meet Me in the Middle of the Air, which was um, uh, exploration of, of his songs on biblical themes, which we did with the Australian Art Orchestra and um, a gospel choir and Vicar and Linda. So that, that was a lot of fun. That was an, originally a commission from the Adelaide Fest, uh, Cabaret Festival. Um, and we toured that nationally. 
And just just to jump in there, PC, that um, that show came about after I went to see uh, the out Paul and the out, out orchestra doing doing um, song song from the river show with Ruby Hunter and Archie Roach, mm. and uh, and I'd got in touch with Paul and said oh, I thought that show was you know just re really great, and then that that sort of led to us working together on. On, on on meet me so we we've had a sort of back and forth with each other for for, for quite a few years um no, no, you know seeing what what each of us is up to and uh, yeah. another really yeah. nice thing that we haven't mentioned uh is that paul guests on archie roach's most recent album which i think mm -hmm. oh, yeah. on a song that he wrote on the paul wrote called um rally around the drum with archie write that one with archie yeah Archie, you know, Archie was uh, spent a period uh, as a tent boxer when he was younger, and uh, that's, that's a fantastic song, and and it's a fantastic rendition of it by those two gentlemen too, I might add. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's been good, and I think we've really developed a special musical rapport. Mm. So Paul Kelly, uh, getting into the studio and putting these songs together, going back through like decades of music to uh, work out what you're going to reimagine here. Are there any of your songs that you feel are taboo that you would never change like you have with, so, so dramatically with these? It's not so much, uh, there are songs that are very hard to change. So it's, it's not like uh, there's a, I'm, I had this, uh, I've made a decision, oh, I can't change that song. But certain songs are just hard to do um, than the way they were originally recorded. And a good example of that is a song like before too long, um, I've, I remember way back trying to, because I've always tried to sing songs differently or try to find new ways to do them. Um, but before too long, it's just a song that sort of resists uh, another way to do it. I think it's something to do with the, the chords move very quickly. So you're sort of locked into this, this uh, fast, fast cycle of chords and there's no other way to do that song. Uh, another song, another well known song of mine, To Her Door, is probably, there's not really too many ways to do that song except it's got to have that feel um, uh, and it's sort of got to have that sort of me melody in the instrumental section that Steve Connolly sort of laid down in stone and every guitar player I've, I've played with since sees no, re sees no reason to try and fuck with it. So, yeah, some songs resist that change, but so in, in choosing the songs, for this record, I chose songs that you know would be um, uh, more malleable. I guess I think there is one exception on this record, and that's a song called "If I Could Start Today Again," and that's um, that is an, another one of those songs where the chords move very quickly. So when it, whenever you have have that that going on, it's you can't you don't have that sort of space or time to shift things around. So Paul, we've played that song fairly fairly close to the way it was was written of course it's got uh, a real f uh, flavor from from the way paul plays but you know we it's certainly not um moved around as much as some of the other songs no i, I based the uh, the piano part very much on the original guitar part yeah. and um i mean it's just why would you not do that it's it's very very effective and it it supports the meaning of the song beautifully. What I find so incredible is, is that uh, both you guys have managed to create this fascinating project in just three days at uh, at Monash Uni. Uh, that style. Mm. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, it's, it's really it, it's it's uh, wasn't didn't feel rushed at all. When but we we'd rehearsed and we and we had a. a we had a rough blueprint going in, and it's just a matter, and it's only two instruments, so it's it's not uh, it's not you know four or five people. Um, you're not hurting four or five people, and someone going off to make a cup of tea. And, no, just, just kidding. Um, it's just it's it's really we knew we sort of had a fairly strong idea going in about about what the record would be, and it's just a matter of executing it. Um, and, and and trusting each other. So uh, we just, you know, some songs took um, five or six takes. Um, we just and we just kept playing it till we felt right. Other songs we got on the first take. So over, over three days, I think we recorded 
there's 12 on the record. We recorded 16 songs. So we were doing about five, five a day. It's pretty concentrated work, but it, it never felt like we were sort of um, uh, rushing things or, or crowding things. Mm. What about the track, uh, Every Time We Say Goodbye, which is probably the number one song played at funerals? I don't know if there is an actual funeral chart, but if there was, I'm sure that one would be up at the top. Uh, why take a, a Cole Porter song? Uh, what, was the, what was the rationale between taking someone else's song and dumping it in the middle of a whole lot of Paul Kelly songs? Well, that's a good question, actually. Um, look, I wanted to bring something to the album which came out of you know, my experience of being you know, really schooled in... Uh, and having built a career really out of playing jazz. And um, although my jazz kind of life has taken me you know, a long way, like light years distance from the American kind of way of playing jazz, uh, you can't learn jazz without great attention to and learning a lot of respect for what we call the Great American Songbook, which forms the basis of a lot of what jazz as we understand the term, is is based on. And, you know, the great songwriters of the period that we're talking about, including people like the Gershwins or uh, Oscar and uh, Hammerstein, uh, Rogers and Hammerstein, rather, and, um, you know, Cole Porter, um, make up that, that canon. Don't Hoagie forget Cam. Hoagie Carmichael. I just said Hoagie Carmichael. <laughs> he was the first great singer-songwriter, really. Yeah. Um, but look, uh, I chose that song for two reasons. Uh, Paul, of course, is a great wordsmith. And every time we say goodbye has got a fantastic lyric. I haven't actually been aware of it being played at funerals. I mean, now you mention it, of course, it's, it's, uh, I can understand why, but I've certainly, I've never been to a funeral where they played every time we say goodbye. I've been to a few. Um, so, but it's got this wonderful lyric about um, um, major to minor. So, uh, and in the song, in the beautiful way that it's constructed, it's got quite an unusual chord movement. And the chord movement echoes this idea about something going, moving between light and dark and backwards and forwards. So it really is in that kind of liminal zone between happy and sad. And I just thought that uh, the melody which doesn't have, you know, huge leaps in it, uh, would suit Paul's vocal delivery. And the, definitely the words would be right up his alley. And um, it's turned out great. I mean, I, I honestly think his version of that song is one of my favourite versions of that song. Mm. Um, you know, he sings it as if he wrote it. And uh, it's great. Well, uh, it's, it, it's a fascinating project. I, I, I just love listening to this record um, and uh, uh, I've just got to throw one question in uh, to uh, Paul Kelly before we go from a couple of teenage uh, listeners that have written in. Uh, young I Ian and Judy from the pop group The Lovells, uh, yeah. Mr Kelly, would like to know what your favourite song from the new Bob Dylan album is. Um, I'd say it'd be between um, I Made Up My Mind To Give Myself To You or Key West. Ian got Key West. We did oh. well. <laughs> oh, good. Good. Guys, thank you very much for uh, joining us here and uh, uh, enjoy your lockdown. Thanks, Paul. You too. <laughs> right. Okay. Thanks, Paul. Stay safe. Paul. Stay safe.